Yeah, so cast your mind back to the 18th of December, just gone. It was a fairly sleepy day in Thurles, and out of the blue, Davy Russell uh, decided that uh, his quarter of a century uh, career as a jockey, or so to speak, was coming to an end. He'd had um, quite severe injuries, had come back, and I guess in 2022 seemed to be riding essentially at the peak of his powers. Uh, but uh, in his own inimitable style, Davy said on the 18th of December, just for the Christmas festival, uh, not to mind the Cheltenham festival coming up, that he had retired. Fast forward to the 11th of January. Davy Russell is no longer retired. David Jennings of uh, the Racing Post, the Racing Post uh, deputy editor in Ireland, joins me. And, uh, Geno, I actually haven't looked at your column today, and it's just purely by coincidence that your Friday column in the Racing Post deals with this very issue. Jack Kennedy gets injured. Gordon Elliott needs a jockey. Davy Russell is back. How are you keeping? Very good, yeah, yeah. It's been uh, it's been a bizarre couple of days, I suppose, in the world of Irish horse racing. But we, we know nothing less, Johnny. Um surprised initially when Jack unfortunately took the fall from from Top Bandit uh, at Nace on Sunday. Um, it's funny actually because I wrote this in the column. I met Mouse O'Ryan who's you know one of Gordon's assistants and one of his right hand men and I said how's Jack? And he goes oh look it looks like the leg again unfortunately and I was like oh god look he has no luck with injuries like you know it's unfortunate he was top of the table and everything and he goes yeah he goes I wouldn't be surprised if Davey came back and I said ah you're joking me I said you're joking no way and I was so, like, dead against it that I said to him, right, I'll have a score with you. I'll have 20 quid with you. He won't come back. That was a he terrible bet. Hand. That was a terrible That bet. was a terrible bet, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, terrible bet. But anyway, I'm going to have to pay up now because obviously Davy is returning. I said you know, as far back as last Monday that it, it, it just could well happen. It just makes too much sense. And also, the fact that Davy um, is essentially helping Gordon Elliott out here. That's kind of what it is. Yeah, it is. Do you know what? At the time on Sunday when it happened, I said, "Nah, it won't happen." You know, he's you know he's retired. He's got out in one piece. He's forty three. You know, he's he's gone. He's gone, and the past is the past. But then, as the week went on, I was kind of saying to myself, "Well, hold on here. There's two sides to this." And I said this in my column today. There is, there are definitely two sides to it. You can say, you know, it's the wrong call because Jordan Gainford and Sam Ewing's confidence, two young jockeys who could potentially be stars. Their confidence would be shattered because Russell is coming back. I don't you can agree say with that, Geno. I don't agree with that. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, you could yeah. argue that. Of course, people are going to argue that. People are going to argue. Jordan Gameford is a young jockey who rode a grade one on Jerry Kalam at Limerick at Christmas. He was the one, when Jack got injured, that was saying to himself, right, I'm going to be riding all these good horses now. Mm. Obviously, it was inevitable. And now he's going, well, hold on a second, I'm not going to be riding them. So that is definitely an argument, Johnny. Davy is 43 you know, he had said goodbye. But then, like, there is the other side to it. And this is the side that I've been leaning on for the last couple of days. Like, you know, Davy has built up all that experience on the big days when it matters most, when the Charles Burl Burns gamble, the famous gamble at Roscommon, when he was going out on the on the third and final horse in that gamble. Like, as, as Charles said himself, there's nobody he'd rather have on the horse than Davy Russell. He's got a terrific Cheltenham record. He knows the horses inside out. He only retired just over three weeks ago. He's... He's fit. His body might be 43, as I said in the column, but his brain isn't. Um, I think it was the right call. When you when you weigh up everything, I think it is the right call. And it's actually, and I mentioned this in my column as well, it's actually Jordan Gameford came on this show uh, to talk about his Cheltenham Festival winner on, on the Shunter two years ago. And his praise of Davy Russell was incredible. He said, Davy Russell is my idol. He always was and always will be, to be honest. I think he's the best man to ever put on a pair of riding boots. So for that reason, I don't think Jordan Gameford's confidence would be hit as hard as some people think it might be. Yeah, so uh, on the 8th of January, um, you can check out on the website, um, David Russell had a long chat with Joe Malloy about what it was like to uh, retire and so forth. And it just goes to show how bizarre sport can be that he is back already. And just um, in, in relation to what Jordan was saying, you know, how would you describe... Um, Davy Russell in terms of his talent as a jockey um, and what does he still have to offer at 43? I think he still has plenty to offer like his talent as a jockey like if if we're looking at the, the, the history books and we're looking back in his career well first of all at the moment he's the ninth most successful jump jockey of all time and you know the obvious ones are above him Ruby Walsh AP McCoy Barry Garrity but he's still in the top 10 he is at Cheltenham especially, like he went on a run there, I think it was from 2018 all the way back to 2006. From 2006 to 2018, he never missed a year at Cheltenham where he didn't ride a winner, at least one winner. Like 2006, 2018, that's a long time. And he wasn't riding for Willie Mullins or Paul Nichols at that time. And those were the two stables dominating. 
and he's still got to win our Cheltenham every year. I think that's the reason Gordon has has agreed for Davy to come back and ask them back because I think if this were to happen in just say Davy had retired in October and Jack got the fall in November and broke his leg. I don't think this would have happened. I think it's the fact that you're going into the most important stage of the season. And who knows? Hopefully we'll find out later today that Jack will be back in six weeks and he'll be back for Cheltenham. And hopefully he will. But just say he's not. You're going into the Dublin Racing Festival, the Cheltenham Festival, the Grand National Meeting at Aintree, the Punchestown Festival, the Irish Grand National. You've got like five really big meetings. Bang, 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 bang. And for that reason, because it's the most important stage of the season, I think Gordon said to himself, right, experience is crucial on these big days. I want somebody who's got a good head in his shoulders to to basically lead the team into battle at these big meetings. And Davey is the man for me. I think that's what it came down to at the end of the day. I think he just thought it was a t- season too soon for Jordan Gainford and Sam Ewing. Yeah, that's perfectly uh, kind of understandable. Also, like you mentioned, Jerry Colombi, who won at um, Limerick over Christmas. Gordon had a very good time at Christmas. Um, he has some nice horses. And um, ju- just just to go back to Davy here, uh, you know, he said, after meeting with Gordon today, I've decided to come out of retirement and ride for the short period while Jack is on the sidelines. Um, it's only been a matter of weeks since I retired. And I actually rode uh, more out this morning than I have uh, in many years. And that was, um, I think that was a couple of days ago. Did, did he surprise? Did he his uh, retirement announced um, in such contrast to Frankie de Tori at the time where Frankie de Tori d- 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 essentially announced he was retiring in 12 months time Davy announced he was retiring there and then at Thurles of a Sunday in December I couldn't believe it it was a half an hour before the World Cup final and I was sick I got ahead of the game everything was going great and then he retired I think I spoke to you about this before mm. World Cup final day you know not a terrestrial television day at Thurles <laughs> a listed mayor you know who won a listed race it was like very un like way to go out um, because he is one of the celebrities in race. And he is like, you ask anybody in the street, you walk down Grafton Street and you say, name five people in race and they'll go kind of, you know, Frankie the Tory, Ruby Walsh. They'll get to Davy Russell per- fairly quick if they mm. have an idea about racing at all. So he is a pretty high profile character. I was shocked. I said, why not wait until Christmas? Why not wait until the end of the season? And maybe one of the reasons was because he wasn't riding the really good horses for Gordon. You know, Jack was had become number one. Gordon had said that publicly. Davy was basically number two. He was still riding good horses because when you have the guts of two or three hundred horses in your stable, you know, you're going to get plenty of good rides. But he just wasn't riding the, the, the real X factor horses in Gordon's. And Is I'm that sure what you was suspect no- it was actually in the main? Well, I don't I don't I I think that was was certainly some part of it, I'd imagine, because Jack to me and I, I, I'd certainly agree with this. I think if in 20 years' time we're looking back on Jack Hendy's career, I think we will be talking about him as one of the all-time greats. That's how good he is. He's been unfortunate with injuries, but he's still only 23 years of age. Jack is that good. Gordon knows that. And I think Gordon has played it beautifully in the last couple of years. Like, Davey was basically the number one with Jack number two, and they just kind of flip-flopped in the last year or two. And I think it's it's worked out beautifully. And I think that Gordon wants it that to happen now with Jack and Jordan I think he wanted Jordan to be number two to Jack going into Cheltenham for Jordan to get some nice second strings at Cheltenham hopefully to get a winner along the way to build up his confidence but unfortunately Jack's injury just occurred at the wrong time but yeah I do I do think that had a part to play I think if Davy Russell was riding every single first string for Gordon Elliott this season I don't think he would have retired at Thurles before Christmas yeah, unfortunately, we don't have um, four hours uh, of a show to go through Jack Kennedy's list of injuries. And I say that only in jest, you know. And I, it, it does concern me at this stage. You you say in 20 years' time, we look back and say Jack Kennedy, who at that stage will be 43, one of the greats. I couldn't agree more with you with the fact that you, at some point you're like, how does Jack keep suffering so many injuries? It was called, a, I think it was a fracture of his lower leg. For a 23-year-old, admittedly he's been riding since he was 16 uh, under rules. He's had a catastrophic list of injuries. And just as it looked like he was kind of on a nice stretch of a run here, he's 20 uh, winners clear of uh, Mark Walsh at the top of uh, the jockeys. Or Sorry, he was uh, he was flying it in the jockeys title. I'll get my, my figures up here. Um, he's 18. He's 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. He was leading by 18 and then it, it happens again. Yeah, he has been incredibly unlucky, but he is a jump jockey and those are the risks attached. Like it's different, obviously, for riders on the flat. It's it's a different ball game altogether, but injuries are part of the part of the game, unfortunately, with jump jockeys. Now he has got obviously to break your leg five times at the age of 23 is extremely bad luck. Like um 
but I, I think he'll bounce back. And one of the things from, and I'm sure you're the same, when, when you interview these jockeys, like I, I'm just putting myself in their shoes. Like I have a completely different mentality to them. And every time you interview an injured jockey, all they can talk about is getting back. Mm. All they can talk about, when am I going to get back? Go see their specialist. So we see in Paddy Kenny today, um, he'll see Paddy Kenny today and he'll say uh, in Santry and he'll go, Paddy, when am I back? When am I back? When can I sit in a horse? When can I ride in a race? When can I do this? When can I do that? Like you think that'd almost be the last thing on their mind when you suffer that excruciating pain. But I think the physical pain is nothing compared to the mental pain. And every time you talk to these riders, when they... It's it's the mental pain of watching these good horses running without you on them that really hurts the most. And that'll be like Jack has got a serious incentive now to try and get back for Cheltenham because we might say that Gordon Elliott doesn't have as strong a team as he's had in other years going into the spring festivals. I did it this morning. He's still got four favourites and four second favourites at the Cheltenham Festival. Mm. It's still a pretty strong team. The likelihood is he could be second top trainer at the festival to Willie Mullins. So it's it's a big job and it's you know it's one that Jack will be mad to get back for. On that, what are you, what are the vibes you're getting in relation to the chance that he'll be back for Cheltenham? No idea. Everybody I speak to has a different opinion. Mm. Literally I could talk to somebody at eleven o'clock today and they'd say, No, he's no chance. I talked to somebody at quarter past eleven and, and these people would know, like they'd be in the know and they'd say, Oh he'll definitely be back. He'll definitely be back. It seems to be a real kind of vast array of opinions. Personally, I think he'd be doing well to be back. Um, I hope he will. And, um, you know, he still has a little bit of time on his side. I think the Cheltenham Festival starts nine weeks next Tuesday. That's almost two and a half months. Uh, you know, it's over two months. I I hope he'll make it, Johnny. I hope. I wouldn't... I wouldn't be sure of it. I hope he does. I don't know. Well, what do you think? Uh, sure, it's only a broken leg, sure. I mean, he should be back the next couple of weeks, really. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, won't, I won't length him like... Um, I mean, I broke my ankle last year and I milted, absolutely milted. Like, I'd just get on the bus because people would hold the door for you. People were so nice to you. But I milted. Like, these, these lads break their legs so often. They break ribs, they break bones, they, they do everything and they just want to get back. And I, I think with a view to Jack, um, at this stage now, it's like enough is enough. Like, give him, cut him some slack here. Before, before we finish up, you know, just, just on Cheltenham, I am kind of, um, I'm a, as, it, as it comes around, I'm like, is, is this Cheltenham, does it mean to, the same to me as what it used to when you see so many odds on favourites, so many races where as much as you want to see Constitution Hill and you want to see John Bond and you want to see Fasal Vega, it, it almost feels like the competitiveness of it is sort of gone. I don't know. What, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's a very valid point. You know, once Cheltenham went to four days and once Willie Mullins became the powerhouse that he is, like the 10 winners out of the meeting last year, it's probably inevitable that the competitive nature of it is, is dwindling a little bit. But yeah, I, as regards excitement, I still get just, just as excited as I did about it 10 years ago. Obviously, I'm working in the game. It's my biggest week of the year. Mm. Um, I still think, though, like I, I'd be funny, like obviously punters, they would be thinking, you know, from a betting point of view, I am still thinking to myself, I can't wait for the Supreme. I can't wait to see a Facile Vega. Yes, he's a shade of odds on. But I can't wait to see if he is the next Constitution Hill. I can't wait to see if Constitution Hill is the best horse we've seen in our lifetime. Like, even those at short prices, the, the punters will, will, will give out and say, the competitive nature is gone. You know, I can't have a bet in that race. The racing fan in us will still want to find out just how good these horses are. So I think there are two sides to it. Yeah, you, you would say obviously that you know when you look through the markets and the anti post, and we do an, an anti post show called Up in the Anti every Tuesday. Like the juice is being sucked out of the anti post market. Like there are an awful lot of short prices. Like we're over two months from Cheltenham, and you've got the likes of Fasal Vega, Constitution Hill, Energamine, Gallop in the Shams, Lossy Mouth. Like they're all, you know, six to four or shorter, which is hard to believe, like this far out, because they still have to get to the to the festival in one piece, and you don't get your money back if they don't run unless you back at no non runner no best, which the price will obviously be much shorter if you do. So it is amazing the way it's gone. You couldn't have thought this, you know, fifteen twenty years ago if you were told that two months before Cheltenham you'd have maybe six, seven, eight favourites that are less than two to one. You would have laughed, but that's the way it's gone. But look, I, I'm still looking forward to it as much as ever, Johnny. And uh, 
I'll try and get you to look forward to it as much as uh, I am. Yeah, yeah, and finally, just um, you mentioned up the up in the ante, flying for you and Johnny Deneen, Um But you are obviously you were once uh, you have a few claims to fame. Your your race and roll, and um, the fact that you got your wedding pictures outside of O'Connell's pub and screen. I think it'd be well up there. And thirdly, God, of course, where is this going? Thirdly, where you, is you were going? once kind of drafted, sort of under Banty into the Mead panel at some stage as a sort of a backup goalkeeper. Sean Boylan back in the house. Colm O'Rourke at the helm. What's going to happen in 2023? <laughs> You bring this story up every time. I know, it's unbelievable. I actually was a sub to Brendan Murphy for an O'Byrne Cup Shield match against Kilkenny. Your retirement was longer than Davy Russell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Banty and Paul Grimley were over to that stage. I'll never forget the, 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 the talking in the dressing room at halftime. I think we only actually won by a couple of points in our college and lashing rain of a January evening. But uh, yeah, I, look, I played for Colm O'Rourke in St. Pat's. He was he was our manager at the time. We got to a Leinster final. Unfortunately, we were beaten by St. Mel's at Longford. But um, yeah, I liked Colm as a manager. What he has is this incredible, like people have this incredible respect for him. In Mead, he's a, he's a cult hero. Like, you know, people just look up to him and all he's achieved in his career. And I think respect is massive when it comes to management. Barry Callan is a Dundary man, an old club man of mine who I thought was one of the best managers I played under, and Stephen Bray meets last All-Star. Like, I think it, they've assembled a really good team. Paul Garrigan was um, was a massive part of the Mead ladies who won the last two All-Irelands. Like, my cousin Orla Lally played midfield on that team, and she was so upbeat and positive about Paul Garrigan. She thought he was the real deal. So you've got four men there at the moment. Eugene Ivers is doing the, 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 the strength and conditioning work. Like, they've assembled a serious team. I don't think it's going to happen this year, Johnny. I don't think you can say Mead are going to be really competitive with Dublin and they could beat them but like we're in 2023 now give it to 2025 2026 I'm just hoping that gap will become a little bit shorter hopefully Jack Kendi has had a good run with injuries thanks for your time Geno pleasure Johnny